Hey Mark, and welcome back for another another bout on mo uh, Money Man. Um, interesting week last week. Yeah, very interesting one. Jaguars did it for you by that one point. Never has a point given such good reward for a weekend. And I, I didn't even watch the game. It, 3,000 ran down for my biggest bet of the week. If that hadn't come off, it would be my worst betting weekend in four and a half years. So, as fine as the margins. Yeah, I mean, it was five plus. You thought it would be a lot bigger, but they got the five points. I don't care if it's five or 50. And, uh, as as it's five. and then those bloody stormers again, eh? You never know who's pitching up. You know, <laughs> when, and, I, and I took the piss out of people saying, I'm sick of hearing about don't bet, uh, don't bet on my balls, because I, I, you know, I always get it wrong when it comes to stormers. I have to admit that maybe it is my bogey, my bogey bet team, the stormers. The Bulls played a very average game. They knocked the ball on so much, they looked so uncomposed. Uh, I don't know whether it was the Stormers were, were good or the Bulls were just very average on the day. Well, I mean, you look again, I think every writer in the country, every week writes about it. The inconsistency, the inconsistency with South African teams. We can't seem to string together three, four matches. The Sharks go to Sydney, beat the Waratahs convincingly, uh, you don't know what they're going to do the next weekend. They win at home, lose. They beat the, sh the, the Lions by 40 points. They take a big one the next week themselves. Uh, the Stormers have been equal to that inconsistency, losing to the Reds the way they did. Mm. Um, you know, then hammering the Rebels, which was a bloody good performance. Then losing to a Brumby side who's awful. And, and then they coming back and beating. Well, they hammered the Jaguars, didn't they? At all? Yeah, they hammered them 32 8 at home. You just so it's it's a very very uh, like you said, it's been a minefield this year for for anyone who's playing Super Brew or actually putting money on this because of the the inconsistencies of the teams, but also then because of the rotation policies where you have with those New Zealand teams, specifically with those All Blacks. So you you don't always know which side's going to run out, and then in the case of the Lions, you never know which side's going to run out. No. <laughs> No, and, and which side? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know who really surprised me in the game, who played, who I thought in the Stormers game that was just sensational, was, was Kubis Visa. Yeah, he's a very good young player. Oof, wow. And you know, the one thing about South Africa is, if you look at New Zealand, they're winners. Mm. They, every, every pair of winners in each region could play for any international mm -hmm. side. Yep. When I look at South Africa, loose forward is the one area we are just so strong in. When you think of those loose forwards that are playing overseas, yeah. that would make most international sides. And you just think of the talent that comes through you and the physical size of them. But he's a hell of a good player. and, and um, He's a man mountain. He is, eh? And just yeah. when you think you got rid of the one, Kubis Visa, here comes another one. You can have him over, you can have him over, <laughs> you can have him over to your house, get his shirt off, and just project something onto his back. And you can have, uh, watch a movie on that guy. He's huge. Yeah, and very talented, and one of those guys, I think he was a monster when he was at schoolboy level. And uh, to come in, and he's a, he's a boy playing with men, but he looks like the man. So. And I had the pleasure to meet him once, he's, he's a lovely oak, a really nice guy. So, yeah. well, maybe Rassi should just keep his eye out. I'm sure he does, Rassi's not stupid. Yeah, I think, and they, I know that they've worked out, there's 70 players that they identified. Yeah, and they've got, they've got like five, uh, 75 players, five per position. Yeah. Uh, and four and five are... 21 year olds that they've looked at the next generation uh, coming through to try and have a plan for the next five to ten years as opposed to a plan just for three to five years yeah. and he's definitely on that radar. One of the one of the things I read on, on my site was um, people having a go at Kuren Bosch, a couple of people. I thought he played a good game. He was he was he was very good in terms of he's got the long he's got the longest line kicking game possibly in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, He's a, he he's could a, kick start a 747. Exactly. And he's never going to put in monster hits at 10. But no. then Robert DeFree doesn't put in monster hits himself, okay? So it's unfortunate in this country when, when a player is, and I go back to the days of Pierce Spies, people wanted him to succeed so much that, that when he couldn't do something, it was if he missed a tackle or he wasn't dominant, it was excused. Then another player who they wanted to fail, they would always find the fault with. When I look at someone like Kerwin Bosch, he missed that tackle in the Curry Cup final. He, uh, he, they put him out on the win, took him out of 10, basically said to him, you can't tackle. Uh, win is a specialized defensive position, and he was found out. They've never forgotten that. Uh, and that's what Dick Muir said, you've got to look beyond his defensive frailties and actually embrace what he can do on attack. 
what he can do playing at 10. What was disappointing for me was I thought he played so well, and on 60 minutes when they introduced Robert Dupree, they brought him on at 10, they moved Kermos back to, to fullback. They may say, oh, well, it, it suits their, their, their formula for the match 23. I'm glad he's got to start again this weekend against the Crusaders. It would, be, it would be criminal if he didn't. Yeah, and, it's, and I think people need to, it's like the same with Damien Willem, so we've spoken about this ad nauseum, Kerwin Bosch's, these youngsters. Give them time to settle and give them time to play. We want the Dan Carter at 21. <laughs> where we want the Stephen Larkin to be complete at 22. And we always think we have so many players. If it doesn't happen in the first five minutes of the guy's international career or with his uh, provincial career, we bullet him. And uh, let's invest in young players and let's actually coach them and manage them. And I mean, Bosch I thought was good and I thought Damien Willemsen was again outstanding. You know? and yeah. Oh, he was, he was special. Yeah. And he's yeah. a special player, and he's also got a physicality that a lot of people don't realize, you know, that yeah. uh, he, you could play him at 10, you could, could play him at 12, and he does add a dimension at 15. I just think at times at 15, he can get a bit lost in a game, where when he's at 10, he's, he's constantly asking questions and doing things. So, you know, I would like to see a... a Robbie Fleck says he's the best fullback in the country. Are you buying or selling that? Uh, I think on form, he's the best one. I don't think he's, he would be the best. I think Billy LaRue is still streets above anyone else in terms of international fullback and a guy like Willemsen would come off the bench at the moment and I think we've also got to look at a Willemsen as the All Blacks did Bowden Barrett in 2015. Mm -hmm. They started with Ben Smith, started with Dan Carter and they brought Bowden Barrett off that bench and he caused absolute chaos to defences and tired legs. So let's also be a bit patient. They both for me got to be in the mix at this stage mm -hmm. um, in terms of a World Cup squad of 30 and um, and I, and I think they they do represent a very healthy future for South Africa in terms of 10 and 15s. Mm, yeah, for sure. How's your super brew? Non-existent. I don't think I don't I don't think I've met anyone who has a super brew that's flying at the moment. And if they do, well, I think they're taking a dart and just chucking it at it uh, mm. because. I, I, by Saturday morning, when there have been a few Friday games, you go on the sites and you just read people like, oh, it's my Super Brew goal for the week again. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? And yeah, and that's uh, not particularly good. Oh, yeah, Super Brew. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's I've never won a Super Brew pool. Um, this year, I've tried to take it more serious and played, and I've actually paid money to get into some, some groups where guys have invited me. And I have to admit that I'm having a bit of fun with it. It's kind of... But if, if, if my... Employment was dependent on Super Brew. I would be unemployed. <laughs> I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'd fire myself. You know. um, let's look at the games this week. You got the Crusaders versus the Sharks. Beginning of the week, Crusaders were favoured by 22 and a half points. They're now favoured by 20, which means that there's been a 10% drift um, on money coming in for the Sharks. It's a lot of money. It's a big market move, and people are learning how to bet and whatnot. The technical term for that is the smart money, which means that a lot of money's coming in on the Sharks. I think when it came up at the beginning of the week, 22 and a half points seemed like a lot to give the Sharks to start a game with. And now the betting is 20 and a half. Your thoughts on the Sharks versus the Crusaders? I think the Sharks will go better than most people think. Yeah. Uh, they've always traditionally traveled fairly well to Australia and New Zealand. There's something about the way they play and about the way the Kiwi sides play that they seem to you know, negate each other. They were very competitive last year when they, they hammered the Blues and just lost in the last minute against the Hurricanes. They've always had good matchups with the Crusaders. They've invariably lost them. I think they've yeah. won three out of 23 or something, but they've, uh, they've always been within seven, 10 points uh, on average. So I, I, don't, I think they'll cover that spread. Um, the Crusaders, oh, you mean the Sharks? Will, the Sharks, will, yeah. yeah. So you, so you believe, which spread? The 22 and a half or the 20 and a half? The 20 and a half. So you still think it's a good bet? Yeah. Yeah, I, at 22 and a half, and this is where people think, okay, what's well 20 or 22, what's the difference? What the difference is, is 10%. Mm. In betting, in the betting community, that's a lot. So at 22 and a half, for me, it did represent good value. Um, and, I, and at 20 and a half, it just makes it a bit unattractive. And that's what bookies do. How they make their money or, um, is by looking at, obviously a lot of money's coming in on the sharks. So what they're trying to do is make the Crusaders side of the bet more attractive so they can lay some of that money off because at 9 to 10, they want to have an even book because they take a 10% margin on, on um, so you know, if they have the same bet on both sides and only have to pay out 90%, that's how they make the money. So to me, it's just, it's just a little bit unattractive. I still think that the Crusaders will win the game and it'd probably be 16, 17 points, but at 20 and a half, 
makes it a little bit uncomfortable for me. So I'm not going to bet on that game. I think the Crusaders are going to win by 15 to 17 points. Your call? Crusaders by 15. Crusaders by 15. Hurricanes, Rebels. Mark, what are you thinking there? Hurricanes at home. I think yeah. they'll win that one comfortably. They've been inconsistent, but they were very good last week against the mm. Chiefs. Again, how good are the Chiefs? You know, we, we never know which side pitches up there. Rebels, I thought they've started the season well in the day vessels, but they've shown some kind of frailties. Frailties. Yeah. And they're showing like inconsistency that we've seen with the South African teams. They are away in yeah. Wellington. I've got the Canes to win by 15 plus. 15 plus, okay. Um, for me, not a game I'm going to bet on. The market's been stagnant, hasn't moved either way. Started off at 12 and a half handicap, still at 12 and a half handicap. When I have, when I'm in, when I'm indifferent about a bet, I'll always revert to the bookies and see where they're going. So they're saying 12 and a half, I'm going to go 13 for my Super Brew pick and hope the bookies help me out on that one. But again, no bet. So they, people saying, okay, you haven't made a bet or, or given us any advice. Well, I have given advice on Super Brew, but I don't bet on every single game. And I reminded everybody, you shouldn't either. And if you do, you probably should go and see somebody. Uh, Highlanders versus the Chiefs. Not idea. <laughs> <laughs> Highlanders versus the Chiefs. This is a market that has moved the most out of all markets. Two points. It started the week at eight and a half handicap. It's gone to minus ten and a half for the Highlanders. Um, so a lot of money's coming in on the Highlanders. And I agree with that. You do? Yeah. yeah. The Highlanders will beat them comfortably. Look, the Chiefs have so many injuries right now. Yeah, I think we saw that the peak of the Chiefs was in Pretoria and Buenos Aires, and that's their season after that, because they've just been started with their match against the Lions. Yeah. It's got, it's got worse <coughs> again against the Hurricanes. But it's, a, but it's a New Zealand derby. You know. There's been some, you know, we keep on saying the New Zealand derby is always a leveler, but there's been some blowouts in the last couple of weeks in those New Zealand derbies. Yeah. As guys save their body for, for, for the uh, World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You never know what you're getting. Again, stay away from this one. I'm still, I think the Highlanders by 11. I'll go Highlanders by 12 for Super Brew. Mm. Do you have an original thought? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, Br Br Brumbies and Blues. No English. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Brumbies, Blues, Mark. Uh, you know, the betting on that's now come in it was one and a, it was minus one and a half on the the blues so um it's now even money it's now pick them so money's coming in for the brumbies yeah that's the fun that's strange yeah brumbies traveling back from south africa and argentina uh the blues have to just go over the ditch and again the blues waveform has been so diabolical um and I'm going to pick them to win. You are, eh? yeah okay and i'll try to win yep blues. so blues you're saying what by one point Brumbies, Blues, I have no idea. Do you have a coin? No. Anybody have a coin? It's going to take a while. No, 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 it'll, it'll take two seconds. Ahmad, thanks, hey? Okay. Turan? Okay, let's see. Okay, so the, the Bok, is that is a Bok, eh? Yeah. Your Bok, it'll be the Brumbies, and whatever that is on the back of that. Let's see. The Blues by one. I'm okay. going the Blues by one. Yep. So you can see the science that I use in my betting, completely, completely Stephen Hawking's-like in approach. And then we have the Bulls and the Waratahs. This is my green light special. This is the one you want to climb into. So the money you would have lost in all these other games, put into this game. The Bulls, Waratahs, minus seven and a half, hasn't moved. Bookies are sleeping on this one, I tell you right now. The Waratahs have so many injuries, but despite the Falau thing, um, a lot of injuries this week. Um, so who's not playing for them? Let me just have a look. We've got Ned Hennigan in at number eight. Uh, we've got uh, Tolo Latu, Rory O'Connor, uh, Jack Dempsey. You know, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty big list when you look at it. To me, this is a Bulls massacre. Bulls to win by two. 20 points or more against the Waratahs. Yeah, I think they'll win comfortably. Not by 20 though. Uh, 15. Not 15. Hmm. I've got the Himalayan yak testicles on this one. I'm going 20 plus. So when I see seven and a half, I think, wow, when the bookies sleep, I love it. So I'm going to put two and a half thousand rand down. Two th it'll pay back 4,750. That includes our stake. But that's, that's my green light special of the week. The next one, 
Jaguar Stormers. A lot of people are saying this, the, the, the Jaguars for sure. This is one of those that I was, in that, I was leaning that way at the beginning of the week. And with Khaleesi not playing, you've got Peter Steph de Toye not playing. That's, 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 that's a big chunk of, of, of good players, all Springbok, all excellent Springbok players. And they're going to play against the, uh, the Jaguars. But I'm still not convinced that it's, a, it's his runaway as I did think at the beginning of the week. Um, Jaguar Stormers, what's your thoughts on that, Mark? Stormers I'm, to win. Stormers, to, wow. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> did not see that coming, folks. I do have a coin, but I think it's a little bit more scientific than that on this one. I just think that the Jaguars have enough to, to cover that, that spread. You know, I don't think it's going to be as big as, as everybody else. At the beginning of the week, I did. And the, the betting there has moved out from, from two and a half to, to minus three and a half on the Jaguars. So the money's pouring in for the, for the Jaguars. I'm going to take the Jaguars just for 500, which is what I call a tickle. Uh, 500 Rand that the Jaguars win by three and a half or more. I'll say the Jags by five. You're, you're going against me again. And you're, Stormers by how many? Stormers by three. Three. Wow. Could be a big talking point for next week. Um, been a lot of fun again. Folks, just be careful out there this week. Um, save your money for the Bulls Waratahs. I think that that's going to be the big play this week. Seven and a half should be, they should cover that at halftime. Should be a runaway. Thanks very much.